I knew the moment that I put my head underwater in a coral reef in Jeddah that there was no other career possible for me. It really is a very beautiful environment and the, and the wildlife has no uh, fear of you whatever, it just comes straight up. All these fish surround you and you can be caught up in fish tornadoes. It is an extraordinary experience and once tasted you can never go back to not wanting to be on a coral reef. We don't think of the British Sea as being full of uh, incredible spectacles, but in the 19th century off the southwest coast, uh, there were shoals of pilchards which would stretch for 100 miles along the coastline, darkening the sea, and uh, the fishery seemed completely endless, that uh, they, there would always be enough for both the people and all the other wildlife that was brought in by those shoals. So there were uh, great uh, shoals of bluefin tuna coming up from the Mediterranean, there were blue sharks, there were poor beagles, there were uh, gannets by the tens of thousands. There, there, there was just this whole kind of flotilla of predators that uh, accompanied these shoals. The fishing fleet, using bottom trawls around England and Wales in the late 19th century, landed five times more fish into the UK than the same fleet does today. And the reason is that there's much less fish. According to the amount of fishing power expended to catch those fish, the change is even bigger. And so we caught 17 times more fish in the 1880s per unit of fishing power expended compared to today. The seas of today are not what they were in the past and I think it's our job to do something about it, to bring those animals back. The sea could be once again leaping with life. We should be able to recover them, we should be able to rebuild the, the densities and abundance of these animals in the sea and we can do that by creating large-scale networks of marine protected areas that offer real protection from exploitation and harm. The thing about marine reserves is that they're leaky and that means that they can leak benefits into the surrounding fishing grounds. When you protect an area from fishing, what happens is that the fish live longer, they grow larger, they produce many, many times more offspring. The reserve, in a way, starts switching on as this kind of fountain of egg production sometimes tens, sometimes a hundredfold or more greater than the production from areas that are open to fishing. And those eggs and larvae are transported on ocean currents over long distances, so they, they replenish the fishing grounds, you know, even, even up to a hundred kilometers away. So the fishing industry, you know, by not fishing in an area is able to benefit from the increased productivity that comes from those reserves. Protected areas will work wherever you establish them, as long as you protect them highly from the sources of harm and damage. And, and if you do that, you get a great outcome.